after the events of this week, are you mad? Are you upset? Are you worried for your country? This video is going to be a practical guide of doing something. So if you're like not upset, well then this isn't the video for you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk practically about things you can do, things you can start thinking, principles you can start implementing to take action, to gather others to take action. Legal, okay, legal, peaceful. We're going to talk about legal and peaceful here. We're not going to talk about some stupid shooting your mouth off, I'm going to go do something. We're going to talk about stuff you literally can do and just to just to make this so much more sweet we are going to be diving deep into the leftist less leftist tactics and we want to use their tactics against them the stuff that they've been doing that's been infuriating us let's start doing to them because friends we are in an ideological conflict. We are positioning ourselves for the conflict that is to come. There are appropriate things we can do now. Steps that we win, battles that we win today will set us up to be more powerful tomorrow. We got a lot to talk about. Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Poplar Report. I'm Steve Poplar. I'm an accountant by trade. And uh, I, uh, I uh, picked up uh, a copy of the Enemy Playbook. Uh, rules for radicals, and that's what this video is based off of a bit. Thinking through what practical steps can we start doing that are legal and peaceful to push back on the system, the deep state. But before we lay out the do's, okay, the, the, the steps to take, we need to understand one, who, who is our enemy? Who are we fighting against? That's important, right? Uh, who is our enemy? How do we hurt them? Right? And what, what is happening around us? W what's going on? The environment that we're operating in. We need to discuss the environment that we're in. Right now, we are in a conflict of ideas and we are in a power struggle for the levers of control. Governmental levers, law, legal, police, military, we're struggling in a PR battle for who gets to be in control of the schools, who gets to be in control of the universities, who gets to be in control of the police, the uh, military, and all of that. And honestly, we've not been doing well. The leftists have been just determinedly taking over institution after institution after institution, and now they are waging warfare on the public uh, propaganda front, the court of public opinion. That's where we're fighting right now. Not physically fighting, but struggling ideologically, ideas in the public sphere of conversation. We need to start pushing back and start pushing back hard. Donald Trump has been out there waging a PR campaign, and some of the things that he's been doing have been highly effective. And we need to talk about how we can do some of those things, okay? So that's the environment. So if you want to grab your boomstick and do something stupid, friends, you are going to actually hurt, hurt the message. And I sure hope that nobody does anything dumb. And unfortunately, I, I, I fear that that someone's going to do something stupid. Until we get to that point, that's not appropriate. And if you do that, at this stage, we lose a lot of influence, right? So we need to look at what's the environment. We've kind of taken a quick look at that. We also need to talk about possible allies. We need to win more allies. Let's just say the un undetermined, the, uh, the folks that are maybe on the other side, but are growing more uncomfortable with being on the other side. We need to win them over because that will make us more powerful. We need to become more powerful. We need to take away these people's power that we're 
in conflict with, these leftists who have an agenda that they want to push on the United States. We need to take away their power. And what we need to do is, for us, we need to be connected and allied with many people, many uh, groups, organizations. Them, we need them to be isolated. We need them to be boxed in. So that it's just them. Just them and their crazy friends, okay? We need to box them in so that they don't have influence on government, that they don't have influence at school boards, all these types of things. Is what I'm saying starting to make a little bit of sense here, friends? Don't worry. We're talking about high level. We're going to get down to the uh, boots on the ground, so to speak. We're going to get practical here. But first, I want to lay out what we're talking about here. We're talking about winning in the court of public opinion. If we can win elections, if we can um, win elections that allow us to uh, hold public officials accountable uh, for the decisions that they're making on how elections take place and everything like that, that's important. Do we have a chance of retaking our country? Possibly. There's, there's a lot of us, friends. And if we play our cards right, we may set things up to our advantage. So who are we fighting against? Let's, let's, not, uh, let's not beat around the bush. We're fighting against the deep state, aren't we? We're fighting against the elites who think that they're better than us and have great ideas for how everything should be structured. They want you to eat bugs. They want you to uh, use wind energy and solar panels. They want you living in a city where a 15 minute city where you never travel more than 15 minutes away from your home. That's what they, they want you in a box. They want all Americans in a box. They want all people around the world in a box. The deep state, banks, we're fighting against the banks, friends. The banking industry, the financial industry, it, that's the truth. They want to control us. And foreign governments, we're fighting against foreign governments. A large portion of the, the funding for the campaigns are coming in through dark money on the, on the other side. They're getting all these small donations that are not being verified as to who they're coming from. Look into it. They're getting lots of small donations that, that they're just like assuming come from people. But really what we're seeing is foreign organizations, foreign governments like China and others are making thousands and tens of thousands of small donations Millions of small donations um, that are not being verified or being recorded. This is what's really happening. The fact is that they can make these small donations. If they're small enough, they can make many, many, many of them. Basically, everyone who's been to Epstein's Island is who we're fighting against. These people and their puppets. So how do we fight against them, the ruling class? We are in a psychological conflict. Let's look back in history at, at the Civil War, the American Civil War. As the American Civil War started to look like it was going to be inevitable and we started having states secede from the Union, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, realized that there were going to be two important things that he needed to work on. First, Thing that he needed to work on was he needed to keep as many of the states in the Union as possible. Okay? So that was a big deal. There was a state that was kind of on the fence, Kentucky. Kentucky wasn't sure which side of the fence it should land on. And so finally Kentucky said, leave us out of it. We just want to be neutral. And Kentucky even said, the first side that sends troops into our state, we will declare war on them. So if the Confederates send troops into Kentucky first, we'll, we'll side with the Union and we'll fight against the Confederacy. If the Union sends in troops, then we'll side with the Confederacy and fight the Union. And so uh, there was this going on, and Abraham Lincoln realized that he needed to be seen not as the aggressor, but um, he needed to get provoke the opposition, the Confederacy, to take the first move to fight the first battle, to launch the first attack. And they were able to goad the Confederates into invading Kentucky. Now, how did they do that? They invaded Kentucky first, 
and that provoked the Confederates to invade, but then they spun the PR battle in such a way that they got Kentucky to declare war against the Confederacy. Also, we have, um, instead of attacking the Confederacy directly, what Abraham Lincoln did was he tried to get them to launch an attack on one of the uh, forts, federally controlled forts, and in the end, the Confederates obliged and attacked Fort Sumter. Uh, this was big, so that the Confederacy was launching the first attack. Uh, Abraham Lincoln could say, I am responding to their aggression. We didn't want this war, but they forced this war upon us. And we are in a similar situation where we need to set the chessboard up appropriately because we want to win as many people over to our side and make, ally make it so that people cannot ally with, our, with the opposition, right? We don't want them to have any alliances. We want everyone to look at them like they're crazy nut jobs isolate them completely, take them away from the positions of power to the insane asylums where they belong. Let's talk about practical steps here. And towards the end, let's just say we're going to get close to the line that's going to make you uncomfortable. But let's start off first with pray. You need to pray for your country. An appeal to heaven. Now, some of you are not religious and you don't really believe in God, I'll say to you the importance of meditating and centering yourself at the very least. You need to be coming from a place of quiet spirit. For those of you who believe in God, like I do, I have a Bible channel if you haven't checked that out, um, you're all welcome over there. Uh, we need God to be involved. Right? And we need to be coming from a place of not panic and, and reaction. We need to own the cycle. We need to initiate the cycle. They need to respond to us. And that is important. We've been waiting for them to do something stupid and then we jump on them. What we're going to do, as we're going to see at the end of this list, towards the end of this list, we need to actually start provoking them. We need to lure them and bait them into doing something stupid. And this needs to be something that we do at a grassroots level where we're provoking people to do stupid stuff so that we can then disarm them. Okay? Second thing we can do, stock up. You need to be independent. You cannot be dependent upon the system that you are opposing. Stock up on food. Stock up on, you know, freedom candy. <laughs> freedom seeds, the brass. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down. Make sure you have your boomsticks. Make sure you have a sufficient level of boomsticks. Do you need 50? No, you don't. No, you don't. If you have several boomsticks, enough to uh, equip everyone that you think you're going to need to equip, then you need to start picking up other stuff like, you know, um, armor. You need to make sure you have something on your head. You need to make sure that you have ghillie suits, right? You need to be able to disappear, friends. These are important things to be thinking about. Don't just get more boomsticks, okay? Get, get, get appropriate gear. Get more, um, more boxes to put freedom seeds in, okay? Make sure that you are uh, preparing yourself to protect yourself and protect your neighborhood and such. Stock up. That includes um, radio equipment. That includes drones. Every, if you have 50 boomsticks and no drones, friends, you don't understand what's happening over in Ukraine. Look over what's happening in Ukraine. You need two boomsticks and you need like five to 10 drones. Okay? This is where the world's going. You need to be thinking about that. All right? Um, three, you need to map your area. And I'm not talking about, like, Google Maps. I'm talking about people. You need to know who is around you, what organizations are around you, businesses. Where do they all stand on things? You need to know the who's. The who's in your community. Who are influential for the other side and who are strong allies for your side. 
You need to encourage your allies. This is number four. Encourage your allies. Flags, hats, signs, conversations. You need to make the people that are on your side, our side of things, you need to make them feel like they're on the winning side, that they're on the right side. You need to encourage them because you need more allies, friends, right? Now we're going to get into the real nitty-gritty here. Five, you need to promote, uh, provoke and document. In uh, Saul Alinsky's uh, Rules for Radicals, he says a few things here. Rule number four, make opponents live up to their own book of rules. He says, you can kill them with this, for they, can, they can't obey their own rules. So, provoke and document. What you need to do is you need to um, act in a legitimate, reasonable way so as to provoke them into an unreasonable response. Rule number five from Saul Alinsky. Ridicule is a man's most potent weapon. It's hard to counterattack ridicule and it infuriates the opposition, which then reacts to your advantage. Using ridicule to provoke. Now, I say here and provoke and document. Friends, you, you have a cell phone. Use it. Record. If you record it, you can edit it. Right? Okay? If you record it, you can edit it, and you can post it. There's lots of channels to post things these days, YouTube to, to uh, Facebook to uh, um, lots of different things out there, right? Provoke and document. Take reasonable steps, and mockery, ridicule, is reasonable. It's free speech. So use ridicule protest, do something that's going, that you know is going to provoke a response from them. As, uh, as, as he puts it, he says, bait your opposition to react. Bait them to react. You want to provoke them to do something stupid, say something stupid that you can record and you can share to humiliate them. So provoke and document is step five. Number six, isolate them. Um, in the Rules for Radicals, it's rule 11. Pick the target, freeze it, personalize it, and polarize it. So don't try to attack abstract corporations or bureaucracies. Identify a responsible individual and ignore attempts to shift or spread the blame. Pick people in your community that are causing problems, whether they're teachers, whether they're school board members, whether they're local politicians, whether they're businesses, then go after the owner or whatever, or a manager. Pick a person, freeze it so that they can't respond. You, you catch them uh, saying something on camera. You catch them doing something on camera. That Then there's like no room to maneuver. Then you personalize it. This person is the problem. This person has a problem. They need, to, uh, they need to be dealt with. Get them fired. Get them uh, to quit. Now, this may seem like we're, we're talking about some extreme things, and we are. If you don't think that we need to be going to extreme me measures yet, um, like I said, this video is not for you. This is an interesting one here, Rule 6. A good tactic is one your people enjoy. If your people aren't having a ball doing it, then there's something wrong with the tactic. So find ways to provoke um, a response or bait an opponent to do something that you can capture on camera. And then you can tell the story of what happened. We need more of these stories. We need a just, we need a deluge of stories and if you get a story on camera, on video, of somebody reacting badly, uh, if nothing else, we'll, we'll promote it on here. But we need to get a network of uh, places to promote uh, these, uh, these stories of these leftists who are going just nuts, okay? Uh, catching them and promoting the stories to 
uh, to freeze them and to get them uh, polarized, right? And that's the uh, personalize it, polarize it. So we need to provoke, this is number five, provoke and document. Bait them with reasonable action or reasonable speech that's going to provoke a response, an unreasonable response. Make sure you document it so that you can then share it. We need to then isolate these people. Go after their allies, the people that are backing them up and sponsoring them, and asking those organizations, does this represent your organization? Does this person really identify, uh, are they really doing what you believe should be done? Do you think this is appropriate? And those organizations are going to have to back off. They're going to have to back off and be like, no, no, we, we, we don't support that. That's crazy. They shouldn't have said that. And then you're going to be like, well, then you need to fire them. You see how this works? Cancel culture, friends. They've been doing this to us for years. We need to start doing it to them. We don't need to wait for them to do something stupid. We need to try to bait them and get them to do stupid stuff in such a way and in a place where we have cameras rolling documenting their stupidity. Friends, we need to hold them up to their own standards. We need to mock them. We need to ridicule them. Not because we're trying to hurt people, right? But because we're trying to provoke a response. So when there's a, when there's a little group out there protesting, oh, that's your, that's your opportunity to go out there and see if you can bait them. Bait them into doing something. Go wear your MAGA hat. Have someone walking behind you with a camera on you to document anyone who messes with you. Just walk through the crowd. Walk near the crowd if there's police there or whatever. Try to provoke them. Bait them to do something to you. Try to take your hat off or steal your hat. And when that happens, you have video footage of it happening. Then you can file a police report. You can then try to get your local media involved. Get it up on Facebook. Get it over to me. And uh, let us hold these people accountable for violating their own rules. For violating the rules of our country. Friends, provoke and document. We need to isolate them from their sponsors, their supporters, from their job. Get them out, and that will disarm them. All right, friends, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. If you think that we should be using boomsticks or whatever like that, please don't comment. Okay? Let's talk about peaceful strategies, tactics, and if you're willing to do this type of thing, let's have a further conversation. If you are going to be a citizen journalist uh, who is going to document the crazy kooks out there in your community, your school board, teachers, to try to get them, now be aware of your local laws, I'm recording and stuff like that, but generally speaking, if you're on the street, you can record anything you want because it's out in public. Know your recording laws in your state, make sure you don't run afoul of those things, and then let's get some of these people uh, doing unreasonable things. And let's start winning this battle, this court of public opinion battle, because we need to start pushing back, folks. This is, is this a perfect plan? No, it's not. But you know what? It's a whole lot better than sitting at home, grumbling and whining about how things are. Let's talk about how to do things differently. Hey everyone, if you aren't aware of my Poplar Prepper channel, a practical channel, I have just posted a video with pinball preparedness, uh, pinball uh, interview. Check it out right over here. Make sure you're subscribed over to that channel.